I haven't um, looked too much into the chapter since uh, last year. So I hope my presentation will not be too bad. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe I will take a pen and paper and I think I will, uh, what I want is like, uh, because it's kind of the same that what we have seen like last time with Federica, you know, we just add like a new parameter and the idea is basically the same, the steps are all the same. Um, I kind of feel like if we want to speak like as um, like some tidy stuff, uh, it's the recipe is kind of the same, basically. We just change a few ingredients, but the idea of the, so I will just take some note also, and we can maybe build a summary of it because I feel it will be all the time the same. Uh, I haven't time to process it carefully, but I would like to share that with you. That can also help and I, and I should need to add it uh, uh, to the link special data science. Because the book of Edza Pedzma and um, and Roger Diamond, like, you know, it has the word link before and it wasn't fully um, ready to print, will be print in April. So this is a, the link of it. And if you go to the, um, if you go is that to, to geostatistical data and special regression, uh, um, if you go to spatial regression here, You will see like it uh, it provides a lot of uh, you have like the basic model, you know, like the one we use. And uh, other other interesting stuff that's linked to what we have seen. Not exactly, but uh, I found it interesting. It have also like uh, just a, a chapter on geostatistics that I haven't processed. So it, it could be useful for us, I think. Yeah. I, have another, I have another link also to provide because I'm watching uh, Roger Bivan's lecture from two years ago. He has done lectures that I will share you the link also. Uh, he speak a lot about Inna, uh, YouTube. So it, Sadly, I'm not I'm still not understanding everything. I will just uh, this is a playlist. This is this one. I will just share the link of the video directly here. And I, I will update later the um, or or share a note with this results. So it talk a lot about a package that's name is partial regression. It's the pa package is still the mess. Uh, error package. Not this one. Events. And it, it talked a lot about INLA and the idea like um, the idea like uh, this is not the correct link. I add them. Well, this is not this is like the this data camp link. Like I anyway, you you will it still provide you like the some in, insights. So I provide you it. But yeah, the it talked a lot about INLA and the idea like um a lot of time, what we are doing is like, so how do we compute a relationship? A lot of time we are doing like inverse distance weights. So closer you are, uh, linearly uh, similar you are, and farther you are um, not linked you are. But, uh, and so you can do it like either like continuously, 
This is like the IDW method, like inverse distance weights. Um, but what he said is like a lot of times, it is better to go with what we have seen in this book with graph, so neighborhood. So instead of having a metric distance, let's say like meters, you go directly uh, with graphing like, oh, let's say like these counties is close to these counties, which is close to these counties. And you take like the shortest pass into the graph to do a distances. And while you are doing that, if what I'm understanding correctly is like, instead of having a bunch of integral difficult to optimize, you are using uh, instead like some discrete data. So you can still, instead of like, you, you know, like you have these huge matrices that um, are hard to compute because they have uh, thousands and thousands of row per line, uh, you can simplify them with what a sparse matrix, which we have, which uh, I do not remember which. Uh, of the function we are using in inla are using you know instead of like one that do that in the in the whole process and the sparse matrix simplify a lot because like in the huge matrix you have a lot of zero so instead of working with plenty of zeros that you still have like to process using sparse matrix sparse matrix is an, uh, an option and uh, this brings him to inla so this is why i wanted to point out before starting so it's a lot of documents, but uh, it's still something that personally I'm working on and I do, I'm not confident that I understand everything, but I think this is a uh, this is good resource. As I like his videos, uh, I really like his videos. They are a bit long. Uh, they can, you know, but that's part of the charm, I would say. Because <laughs> they bring a lot of anecdotes and obviously, you know, a lot about the history of our and not only R, but of the special evolution and modeling. And he bring all of that into this video. But uh, sadly, on the negative part, he write a lot of equation, like especially in this video, the sixth one, on the board. And well, we can't read it. So <laughs> it's difficult to get it. Anyway, that's what it is. Uh, do you have like, a question, remark? Should I go st just straight into it? Okay, let's jump. Oh, uh, I, so I, I'm quite happy if we can like, it's really good when we complete this book so we can jump in as well like in this special book, the one that I link it or as well into the geo computation. One of these two. I would like to have like one of the book club I attend be on one of these two. So that's it. Uh, let's go Let me share the geo computation. What? Uh, Alou, if you miss, sorry. No, I'm talking about the geo computation. Yeah, yeah, this one That's is good too. Very good. Also, so, so yeah, it was about uh, the uh, you know all the um, coordinate uh, coordinate system, and how do you access them uh, with R and stuff like that. And it was very good. And that we have seen, but like it's a good, like, you know, to repeat. Um, so let me screen uh, share with yours. And this one, share. This is not the, this is not this one. This is this one. And this one. I will move the chat here. Do you see it? Just that. Yes. Is it good? Just that. It's good, yes. I can okay. see it. Let's go. So the learning objective, yeah, I do not think like we are learning a lot more. And um, we are Basically the same, except like this, like penalized complexity prior with stuff we have seen like way earlier. Uh, for us, it's just a new function, basically, because it, I still do not understand that too much. And obviously, we are adding time in the analysis. 
I mean, in the analysis, it's not that hard. It's mostly like, uh, yeah, yeah. like I found, if I remember correctly, it was more interesting. I was screaming, baby. here. OK. So getting Spain. So we are getting the map. Um, so I tried to, to like, at the top. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, this also get data will be deprecated, so it will be changed. So yeah, this is like yeah, this is a lot of work if you want to contribute to spe to special data, to special package. Um, but it still works. So you get like you get Spain. Obviously, you get the Canaries here. I don't know how to pronounce that in English, but Canaries Island, no. And uh, you just want the metropolitan area, like uh, uh, without the high, uh, because like the station uh, we'll use like um, we'll use like station a meteorological station, and they are just present here. So like a fairly wild uh, deep layer uh, stuff. So you get the map. You pass it to uh, SF. You transform it to polygon. Uh, I'm not sure this was used. This part was. Then uh, you change area. You organize it a bit, and you get the biggest one. That's a way of doing it. Instead of like filtering, like you just take the biggest one. Anyway, and this this warning is not important here. And then a classic plot. Uh, I didn't know like you could uh, change the the datum, uh, the coordinate. Like the, uh, I think this is like a, a ggplot function that I didn't know. But okay, you maybe like were more uh, um, versed into that. Like you can directly like uh, add the good datum into a ggplot object by while using this function. I think this is a ggplot function, and while providing you the correct. Uh, Data. Mm -hmm. okay, that's interesting. I don't know. I, I was, I was, I, uh, my idea is like the, the object should always uh, be in the correct uh, datum first and after I do the plot. But this can also be an option, like, you know, for quick visualization. So I think it was a nice trick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, uh, Alu Yes, it's based, still based on the this raster package. So I would like to know, it's like I was, because look, going through the function, I discover we can also uh, get, I think uh, it, we can get data from, I think, wall climb. Yeah. So I would like to know, can we get the current data for that particular year? Is it possible? Probably with Terra. I do not know too much Terra, but I think like Terra is basically like the full, uh, you should use geodata package, and I think the geodata package is managed also by our, um, by uh, Roger Edgemans, which is the maintainers of the. I pro probably pronounce badly his name. Uh, let's see. we can check that like if you want. So let's see geodata. I think uh, search our projects. Oh no, I shouldn't do that here. I should do that here. Geodata, and I want a package. Yes, this one. No, it's in GeoR. Geodata, can I just check? Package. Package Geodata, this is this one. So see? It's still the same maintainers and raster and Terra. And it's probably like starting to build this package that will probably like provide you uh, the ability to download geographic data for special analysis and mapping. Can can I maybe make it better now? I can't. Yeah. So I didn't use Terra. So instead of having everything into raster, I think I, I don't know. I think his idea is like the Dividing like having a special package to get some data by himself, and you can use geodata. I haven't used it now. 
I don't know if it's uh, does answer your question. Yes, yes, thank you. But I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Federica. Yeah, I I did use it. Um I think that you can find a documentation about the function. Yeah. More information on how to expand your uh, search. And um, um, this is the package. But if you go exactly on the function. Yeah, which one? Get data. Uh, oh, you mean like the, this is the old one, no? The raster one. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, this data here. Wait. This is geodata. This is the new one that I shouldn't, that I should have used instead of raster with get data. Okay. So it's fairly new. Uh -huh. Exactly. So that, that's what I'm saying. That the, 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 the function that you've shown, you just shown, it's, um, get data. Get data. Get okay. data is from raster. Right. Okay, and, but Olafemi said if we could uh, find data for a specific year, is that right, Olafemi? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so I think the, the way I, I will do it, I will do is searching um, like uh, on the internet with get data function from Raster package for a specific year. I, I'm just saying, uh, in the meantime, I, I try to like get data uh, uh, from Raster for a specific Let's go with this. Yeah. So something like that. And uh, how to extract uh, value from annual Raster exactly. So you you can you can um, yeah find find the um, the the things that you want. You have some specific data that you yeah. can uh, download with get data. Yeah. Not everything. It's a bit a mess. But. Yeah, you you need to stick uh, uh, on 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 the way that. It, it, but you have year here, for example, to get uh, here um, just a little bit above, like one. No, 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 down, down, down. Um, uh, here, where is get data? Um, yeah, and the line above, there is year. Yeah, to get projected uh, future climate data, for example, you must provide va various arguments. Yeah. Like, uh, and then in addition, you need to provide a model, a year. Okay. So, for example, this, this uh, example here gets data uh, from the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you, if you search and, and you type, uh, you Google it. Yeah. And, yeah. Yes. Uh, look at the documentation. If you don't find anything, try to find an example that someone has already done with another year, possibly. Or starting with your data and then search if something has already been found for looking at specific years. And then you put yours. Yeah, it's what you see, like not, not all the competition are available here. Yeah. So you, 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 need, you need to maybe, maybe sometimes it's good just to go like directly to the providers and check if they have data. Yeah, because but it, like if, if we go like to the new package, let's see what does it provide like. Uh, so special analysis mapping the package acts. So still climate, elevation, land use, soil, species occurrence. And where does it get these data? Mm, do we have like, so it get it from the CM IP6 climate model. So it's a model. Uh, and you do not calibrate model data uh, from uh, still the same organization. 
Then you can pick the model you want. So there are different kind of climate model. Then uh, this, I don't know what this means, a valid shared socioeconomic pathway. You get time, the time function is, uh, so it's mostly in future, uh, apparently. And you can pick like min, max, average, etc. You have different kind of resolution. There are in minutes or of degree. So this is big. <laughs> uh, and the uh, longitude, latitude, like you can probably like ask. I try to turn a, a spot raster, which is like a, a Terra object. So this is for it. You can get also like. So this is to access the country cards. This is a function to do that. You get cropland. This is from the ESA world cover. So same like, so I, it's like a, a, a package that facilitates you, you like to get some data. I haven't checked it, but it probably can help you a lot. It probably, re, re, I mean, from what I'm seeing, it looks like it, it's a good replacement for, um, get data inside of rasters but sometimes like you do not want you just want to get data as you do not want to download rasters so it's it makes more sense like uh, does it depend of of what what's the dependency of it uh uh uh, uh i'll see like it depends so anyway you will done it, it depends of there so you really have to add terra too but it's it's light on dependency you just have terra and then you have the dependency of terra so I'm suggest like JSON lighting. Okay. Yeah, even 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 just uh, a Google search will help. Yeah. You can, like you search for the type of data you want, and and you Google it, and then you say that you are going to use the guitar. Uh, so searching and then then something uh, come up. You you might don't need to use um the raster package for example you do you might find data uh outside the get data function yeah 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 and anyway yeah we just use it to get like you know the shape of spain which you can uh, use you can use air natural earth you can use like the world file that's uh somewhere i don't remember just like the shape is a bit better here, I feel like the level of detail is good. I think the resolution is good. Like, you know, it's it, obviously it's not perfect, but it's way better than others. And it's uh, it's not yeah. easy enough. You know, it's the, the, the relationship between like the weight of the file and the resolution is good. Yeah, so th this is something that I don't don't. Uh, I so basically you you look at this um uh preciseness uh, of the uh borders and everything for me for example i don't look at this this thing i might need a very uh you know i don't mind if it's very very specific on on the on the borders because i uh, look at the data inside the the country so where yeah. they are located they may they may if but sometimes, you know, if you can combine a different data and do a very nice, uh, like high resolution as this one here with with get data from for the country and then you um, combine other data from other another source, for example, and then you can plot the information on this resolution. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, well, yeah, it worked fine. Uh, it's not at the resolution that we care too much. Uh, okay, data. Here we are getting the data from the, oops, I went too quick. Uh, so we get them from European Ever uh, Environment Agency. Uh, so in, I just like, uh, so you can like directly like, uh, I. I I changed it a bit, like because like she was importing. I just make the code on one uh, instead of like downloading with the browsers. You can directly use read CSV to uh, download it, and then. But the default of that is like you need like to clean a bit the column because um, 
you are not keeping all the column. So you need to specify the column because I specify other as false. Anyway, we are loading deplyer. I could have used deplyer for that. I'm not, not deplyer read R and use like read dot uh, read underscore it. Uh, CSV. Just it doesn't change too much anyway. So data here are uh, in uh, um, WGS84. Well, so the page is 4326. So you need to convert it. Uh, so just like we clean it a bit more. This is just some cleaning, uh, renaming it. This is this is our code, I think. This is very Airbus-ish, but that's fine. Uh, then uh, we will produce like a data frame um, of um, with like the code of it, convert it, transform it, and now we have all of our station like for our. Um, of monitoring station for our three dates uh, with the latitude longitude. Uh, if we put it in the same coordinate system, which the one Spain use, I do not remember which one it is, but this is the one like you should transform. So this is our points, our, our station. So this is this is point data. Sorry, I should have like this is station. So this is represented as the points. Uh, the code are. Uh, this is just two columns, so you need to convert it in in uh, with that. This is this is what it is down here. Two column to have like uh, the color the SF column instead, the GM one. Then this is in for the the, the correct. This is WGS for uh, WGS eighty four. We know it, so we need to set it, and then we want to transform it in the correct system, the one Spain use. Which is like this one. I do not remember the name of it. And that's it. And now uh, you produce like new coordinates instead of, and then you can plot it. And uh, this is just a facet wrap by year. So you basically like classic, um, classic ggplots and uh, by years. So you have, we do not have station in Andalusia. <laughs> I don't know why. Andalusia does not monitor um, uh, particles. And that's it. So we have like uh, our data that contain uh, small particles, um, small particle in the hair. And this, this like darker you are, less you have. But no, nothing too complicated here. The modeling part, this is where like the fun starts. Uh, so let's define why uh, IT as the location, uh, I mean, the level of particle uh, of particle of 2.5. I think it's millimeter. I do not remember, like this is micrometer, something like that. Uh, that's our at I location. And now we are at the T time. So because we have three dates, no, 2015, 2016, 2017. We have like uh, this information that's why at space and time. And this will be following a normal distribution, which will have a classic standard error that does not change uh, what it, whatsoever. It's, it's, we will not like, uh, we'll mostly work on the mean here. Uh, which follow like some mean uh, that's depend of the location and the time, but the standard error of it will be like the same. So the mean is so you mu it's specific by the location and the time. This is still a hierarchical model uh, which which will have an intercept, and this is where like the big. Um, Big mess is, uh, and uh, so the intercept, the variance of the measurement error, not not correlated in space and time. That's what I have said. Uh, here it's a random effect uh, which which will change in time, and it will change in time for the first order autoregressive uh, dynamic and spatially correlated. 
innovation. I don't know. It's cool. Uh, so how will we write it? We'll decompose it. Uh, I like I like the other way of writing it. This uh, the first part uh, is what we call the first order. This is this part here. You can also like write it like that. So it's just another like intercept with um, an effect of time plus a random noise. This is it. So here, yeah, like we are, we are going to analyze the effect of time with basically another linear function, <laughs> which uh, basically take an intercept, the effect of times. So we are, we are, this is like the particle, the PM that we want to try to model to understand or predict. And it's just like is a model of like an intercept because it's a linear model plus uh, the effect of time plus a random noise. And here, this is our classic matrices of uh, space, but it's uh, space. So x y is the location, and it will be like a matrices with the location times. So it's not too big matrices here. I mean, it's kind of because you have lots of but. So if I want to sum it up, it follows a zero mean Gaussian distribution, temporally independent, but spatially dependent at each time uh, with the Matten covariance function. This is kind of complicated. Uh, this is simple, as she said. Uh, we could imagine a relation between time and space. So here we do not like, we are not saying like time and space are related. See, like uh, it, it, no points here, they are related. And uh, we could have more covariates, like temperature, precipitation. This is just like the location and the time. And the location are not correlated with the time effects, the B1 here. See, no effects here on this model. So what we are gonna do here, uh, we are gonna use like this, uh, it, this time we're just gonna use like the non-convex hull. So we're gonna draw a mesh, but to draw the border of this mesh, we are draw a, a convex hull shape. So remember, like when you were presenting, oh, I was I do not remember which one was presenting last time, but we are you have two two ideas. Are like you have a polygon that you want to clip, or you can use like the like you can draw yourself a polygon with the coordinates. We'll do like still this triangling stuff here. So we'll like do small triangle when the points are closed and bigger triangle when we do not care. This is just for the mesh that works. It's still a T2D mesh, uh, mesh, like we are still working in 2D, just space and no elevation. Uh, we still have a lot of deprecation uh, functions that I'm afraid of, but I have no way that I can do something about it. And I think it's very important because it, it's the function that are used to calculate the sparse matrices. And uh, everything uh, on that, on the sky, I mean, I'm probably sure like they are fine, they are good people. I mean, people who are working in research into that, they will correct it. But um, all of the chapters of what we are building, all the foundation rely on the space on the sparse matrix. So I think it's just like changing it. They have not done it, but it's important. Uh, here we are doing like very big edges. Uh, so it's in meters. So this is one kilometer. So it's 100 kilometers. So this is big. <laughs> and those are. And one, two, three, yeah. So this is big, uh, big mesh. Even if like, if it doesn't look like it's still huge distances. Okay. So now we have like drawn our uh, mesh that we will use it uh, instead of using like, you know, direct relation, we'll use that to, I think if I remember correctly to get our neighbors. And uh, here uh, we are gonna use like the Matern uh, Inla uh, to uh, SPDE. It's like the stochastic approximation, whatever's. 
and we'll use like the penalized uh, prior a uh, constant penalizer. What's the name of it? I do not remember it. Uh, the acronym is for let me wait. Penalized complexity priors. Go back to the model. Go back to the model. And for the um, and we are still using the mater the matern kernel. The matern is still like uh, the one we are using to uh, modelize the relationship between space. So the covariance it's still a matern covariance. We went deeply into that on the chapter nine, but I still haven't fully understood it. Just like you know, but the re recipe is still the same. First, you locate your points. It needs to be SP object. I mean, you need to have the coordinate C uh, here. Uh, this is called the this coordinate are just like uh, you know a data frame with x and y. Uh, so you draw that. So it, I do not think it will work with the SF object. I could be wrong because like an SF object, you know, like the coordinates are inside uh, one column which contain list. Yeah, just like a, a simple structures. And then you have like uh, the matern, you're providing the mesh. The alpha is still the same ID. We do not, we want like a matern that's kind of in, in fact, it's the same that in, uh, the, uh, I do not remember exactly, but I think it's the same. That's an exponential kernel at the end. Same as like week, we want to have everything. The prior range, here this is defined like that because this is this penalized stuff look. So we want for every uh, we want the probability uh, of the range being inferior of uh, ten kilometers equal zero point zero one. So uh, this is a, and so you can write it the other way also. So this is like zero point zero one divided by the probability get the probability of R. And here, this is the prior, the prior for the range because we are modeling. And the prior for sigma, uh, this was like uh, the um, variance uh, stem. Like we want the probability of the variability uh, uh, was um, superior to three, which is a huge uh, variability uh, equal to 0 0.11. And that's we reverse it to have like the other one. Okay. Still same problem with matrix. Uh, no, this is where it start to be different from last, uh, not last week, but last time, because you need to generate indexes in time and in space. So first you create uh, just like one, two, three, basically, <laughs> because like you have unique uh, and the length of unique of the years, is, we have three years, so that's it. Then you have all your indexes, which is basically will take, uh, which will call S uh, indexes in space, I guess. And uh, we will have like uh, for every kind of small node we are producing, like, you know, like the small uh, here. And there will be also by time. So that's produced like a huge, I should have like loaded, but I can like maybe. Let's see, I'll still go here. Um, uh, so that's produced. If you go uh, the length here, yeah, not the length, be careful. Uh, you will have like um, a lot of nodes and um, and that's it. So you have like the index on time and space. This is what you want. I'm trying. I'm loading on the same time. I'm speaking because we are short on time. I'm uh, loading the stuff so we can inspect every element together. So uh, the same idea last week. Um, yeah, this is like CP attention to the S. Uh, so this was the same. We are just creating groups similar to indexes. So now uh, instead of having years, we want to have one, two, three. This is the same idea. So D of years is like the years minus the minimum years. Uh, you will just get. Uh, um, zero for the first years, one for the second, the second years, etc. 
this is just like a way like to simplify yourself. You could have like assume like you, and then uh, you make a projection matrix, a blank one, which take the mesh, the the coordinate, and this new group, which is just the year. For every uh, every um, every data. So instead of having year, you will have zero, one, two, because you have three dates. Okay, this generates a sparse matrix, uh, uh, a big one. Uh, now we need to produce the grid where we're gonna project our data. Same as that last time. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I didn't know if I should, I mean, you, you could think like you could cover first instead of doing everything, but that's fine. Uh, and then that's it. That, no, this is, this uh, is not new, like, yeah, Federica, I'm I, going a bit too fast, but yeah. No, no, no. Uh, okay, that, that's great. But I have a question. So basically, sure. to make the grid. Yeah. I use the box. Huh? Yeah, you create a box. And like then, you use your map data. This is map. This is the map of Spain. Uh -huh. You create a square. Uh -huh. First, you create a square. Then you increase the size of the square in in both sides. So uh -huh. in the minimum, it should be negative, and in the positive, it should be uh, positive. Uh -huh. uh, I do not remember the units, but uh, yes. And uh, why, why is the length out equals to fifty? Mm. Uh, just asking i don't know uh i think because uh we are working in uh, i do not remember the map um let me let me compile it's uh, not this one i want to go in oh, it's still loading my project it, is still loading. Isn't, computer slow uh, i think because like you want uh this is the distances between the points you are creating a sequence that's go a bit below one and a bit further one from a, a length. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And you create like basically a bunch of points. It's a sequence that starts here. That's an air mm -hmm. from, I think, like link us, we should check it. Let's, let's do that. Can I use any, any, so it's like a conventional number, 50, it's, it's a block. Wait, it's, uh, Seconds. I, I want just the basic function. I'm so frustrated, but let, let's go to that. Uh, yeah. uh, sec length. So the longer, yeah, it's the length of the sequence. Uh, here it's 50, but I do not remember. Like you need it to be. Uh, let's go here. I do not remember what was the unit of n at the end, but you need it to make sense with the units where you are using. If you are in meters, degrees, basically. Like, this is the two options, basically. You have like as a degrees, many degrees, that long, or as a meters, kilometers. And then you want your unit to be like, make sense with that. So what's, what's it's created here? Like we can, I can generate like, it's my, my R is still loading. So I will try another stuff. Yeah. Do you see like my uh oh. so let's say like uh mm, sec and we'll go like one to one hundred and length out uh let's see five for example so it divided by uh, it divided by sequence by five. If we go ten, here we go. When 12, 33, 34, It tried to make it like probably better if you do that. Well, a bit better, but not perfect. And we get eight, nine, ten, ten, ten breaks. So here she probably get fifty. If I go like, let's go a bit bigger. Uh, start with one. Yeah. 
and go 50. That's just dividing in homogeneous chunk. And you have 50 of them. At starting at one and then it tried to do something correct. Is it good? Yeah, uh, the, there's even um, from from the simple feature package SF the, the yeah. function SP make grid make SP make grid. M maybe it's, maybe it's better. That's why I write it here. I do not remember, but I I thought like maybe it's easier to convert to SF and do a make grid, but. I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure if it's better because um I actually tried to when I uh, I was attempting to uh, make the grid for for the lake for a lake and yeah. uh, so I use sp make grid but this way looks better so basically because I've tried uh, using the box yeah uh, so. I'm still logging. Mm. Yeah. Can I can I uh, share my screen? See, I'm switching to projects. Still switching. I probably did. Can, can I share my screen? Yeah, please? sure. I'm stop. I'm stopping sharing. Uh, wait. Uh, where is it? Um, yeah. so you in the meantime can, I... can do your. Uh, your yeah. Um, when can I stop? So, oh yeah, stop share. Can you I see? the function, so I will. Yeah. Can, can you see my my G? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is not uh, in, is entirely correct. Okay. That's fine, as long as it works. Okay. So this is the the coordinates. Okay. Yep. That are in UDM. Uh, and I have some extra information which I'm not yeah. using. I don't know why I put it there. Okay. So then I use, um, I transform yeah. this UTM into. No, you set it first. Okay. Yes. And I then you transform. It. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I set it first and then transform into lat and long, long and lat. Yeah. Then I make a grid. Yeah. So ST make grid, and I need to use this uh, um, ST. This is a convert. ST has a SF simple feature column. So you do not have like other information. You just have the geometry. OK. And then I can use the very box. The box of the, the points. The points are here, OK. And then I use this. Uh, other options, what yeah. centers, and then set when, size. When you set square equal false, you will what get what like hexagon points. Oh, it generate points. Okay. Points, and then uh, set the cell size, and I, I just say square false because this way it. Oh, let me let me let me let me let me google st make grid if i uh i'm reading the documentation um no it create hexagonal grid if you make square equal force it will create hexagonal grid so you are doing like uh, it's difficult with my hexagonal grid. It doesn't do points. It do hexagon. Uh, okay. Let let. But well, anyway, so the, this uh, this the the way you uh, you show me it's uh, looks better. It's pre it's precise. It's more precise. I mean, the the, the way like uh, uh, it's done in the the book is way more uh, air basish 
and doesn't rely on anything. Like you can do that without uh, without package. This is just base R. And then you just need like your coordinate to be aware that your coordinate or how you treat your coordinates. Mm -hmm. I show I, I show you one more thing. Uh, sure. Then, um, okay. As you can see, this is my out, no? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just copy and paste the the things. Um, and this is the output. Can you see the? Yeah. The yeah. So as you see, it's squared. It's not um because um yeah it, it creates a b box so b box is always square uh, okay because you know it's it's a bonding box that contain every info the minimum bonding box that contain every information yeah so that that was my question instead instead i stopped sharing instead in the book you see yeah. that you just shown the, the I can grid, I can reshare yeah yeah Let's the grid see. is is inside so inside the boundary of the country it's not a square thing let me let me let, we can see that like do you see it yeah 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 so here you, we have generated sequences two sequences so we just have one vector two vectors sorry that's more or less that's take like the minimum minus one of the x min and the maximum uh, plus one of x max and the same for the x and y then you expand the grid so you basically like generate new uh, instead of having like just two you generate like all the value inside of the of it and you want that as a matrix mm -hmm. because i do not know what's expand grid return i do not think it's a matrix you can check the object then what you get is like huge matrices with all the coordinates of the points. You convert that first, this is a matrix, you put that into a data frame, then into an SF object with the code, which is just X and Y, which was defined way earlier. Okay? So yes, this could be a function. Instead of having to do it, like all the setup uh, to be a function because like we, you, do it a lot um then uh you uh, are converting uh you are putting the good so this is a new p object see you're giving like the right coordinate system i mean do not need to transform because you are producing like the the, the coordinates that we are using were in correct coordinate system this is easy to make mistake i think because like it rely on you being careful of what you are writing. And then you are just doing an intersect. And that's it. Uh, so we need to do that for every year of data. So you are basically just providing them, you know, and they will take the value one, two, and three. That will be recycled. So you are basically like, so this GP one, this this all these points, you are just stacking them with value one, two, and three, which will be our group letters, the group that we have generated before. So you get like this. Uh, so you basically like just get like a huge, uh, ma uh, yeah, just just used with just uh, a just just uh, huge data frame with plenty of line and a bunch just three columns. Uh, uh, then we'll make our, um, uh, or, uh, we have made like the first, what was the name of it? Like the project, the first projection matrix which was A. Then we do like the projection matrix with the data inside of it and we'll stack them. See, we are like doing like, no, we have like, what was it? Uh, SP, what was it? Uh, yeah, we make just a, a blank one, empty one. No, we are doing the one with the data. Yeah, because it's take like our group. Our group, remember, are just like uh, the our third column. So what we have produced here. Then we stack them. I do not still do not understand what's doing stack, but the stack divide by like the, what is estimate and what would be predicted. 
and it take like the effect is what we have designed like the and s is the special effects which take our indexes uh we still have the same deprecation um uh, message from the matrices because we are still rolling our sparse matrices and uh that's it and we we stack uh the estimates and the prediction so here we just have like what we're gonna estimate what we just provide data and what we're gonna uh predict is uh yeah the estimate is on the blank and the data is in the heaps that's it we have this big stack we set up the formula all priors uh is so we use this is like the technique we are using the parameter is just like because you want this interval it's theta the formula is still y equals zero because we do not want the intercept because like the intercept plus um the form this is the f this is where we have a special effect it takes the s which is the time the model uh will be like spde still the same stuff the group this is our year and here uh this is a new model we are using a auto regressive of first orders which is a r1 so basically like we are modeling uh with the last year the last the previous year and the next year of the previous one etc cetera, etc cetera. the hyper parameter was your priors which defined here uh and then that's it we have your formula everything's defined you can just throw everything into inla remember the compute true to have everything the data empty the data full lot of warning so this is all like uh and that's it so you can compute the marginal which take like the marginal from the b0 or intercept uh the precision of the our observation observation we take uh the precision and the uh the various range the range the standard deviation from our hyper parameters not the parameter we are still like this is still stuff like from what we are trying to do it's it's more clear here then we just plot them what do we have like we have our b0 which is around eight the precision of the gaussian observation which go the remember the precision is the reverse uh i mean no the the inverse of the standard deviation you know the precision uh precision is equal to one divided by the uh, variance not the standard deviation sorry the squared variance the squared standard deviation Remember, precision is just one equal uh, uh one uh, pre precision equal one divided by the um, variance the range remember the range is where um uh we are like uh uh well the model well the special correlation kind of top you do not have any more special correlation which is around uh 20 kilometers uh row uh if i'm correct see group row uh and row are the correlation between the group so you have a huge correlation i think it makes sense and the standard deviation of it I'm hoping I'm understanding well. I think this is like uh, it makes sense that you have correlation between points. That could be wrong. I'm trying to understand everything. Anyway, we can do for every year we have data, so we can do the map. So what we are gonna do is like we are taking uh, we are using like uh, our stack index and we are taking data. We are using a data frame instead of just like whatever it was. Uh, uh, now we are adding a new columns at time. Before, like we just have like the coordinates, and uh, we are gonna add thread mean, thread lower upper band, and thread upper band, which has the summary fitted values, and this is just provided by the by the the function in la because we ask it computable true, I think. Here it attached a new package, so be careful. And I think reshape two is old, so um, it masks whatever. Uh, then melt is used by uh, it's a function from reshape. 
I think it's kind of the same that a pivot something into dpliers. So basically, like you will have like uh, a new data frame, um, which uh, will have like kind of the. It will basically provide you tidy data instead of having the data, you know, like longer. If my if my understanding of it is correct, it's a long time I haven't checked that. And finally, you can have like the prediction of what would be like the data uh, for uh, the three years. So one, two, and three. It's probably like 2015, 2016, 2017. Like it should be good to convert that. The prediction of lower level, the prediction for like the three years also. And as you can see, like Andalusia is bad because we probably do not have data. I mean, it's bad, just less, uh, we have less information, so. That's it. Uh, more, you have more information on special data model in the book, like, you know, this book um, uh, we already shared. Uh, and that's it. So I don't know, I, I, I'm kind of sure like, uh, I know what to do in basic situation, but uh, I will be like very, very hard for me like to adapt what I have learned to a new situation. I mean, to more complex situation. Uh, this is my my feeling. But as I said, stuff that I'm learning, uh, the book, I mean, this part is interesting, but I need more. And that's why I link at you like the link uh, at the beginning. If you have like question, I, I will also like update later of the GitHub repo. Question, remark? And I will try like to do like a summary of what we did and why. This is my goal for this weekend. Question. I stop sharing. Hey, West. Thanks for trying with me. Uh, next week, I will FME while you are doing flex dashboard. Yes, so we'll uh, relax a bit. Yes, there's no problem. I, I, like this I like this package. <laughs> so that's good. Well, if no question or if more question, like feel free to chat in the Slack. And if not, well, see you later. Okay, see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Okay.